Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about responsive website design and go over how you can implement this work in your designs. So the first thing you'll notice in our folder that I'm going to be using for this tutorial, there is nothing special going on. It is an image, an index, and a style sheet. If we head over to the notepad, you'll see that the index page, nothing special going on there. And the style page, nothing special going on there. Just simple markup and simple styles. Most of the work we're going to be doing will take place inside the style.css page. Let's view this within a browser so we know what we're working with. And this is what we have. Nothing happens when you resize the browser, but we want it to change when the browser gets to a certain point. So once it gets down to right here, we want the content to shrink with the browser. This can be achieved before this uh, media query stuff just by using fluid layouts like uh, you know, saying 100% and 70%, things like that, De defining width with percentages. But we don't have any control over the placement of content and the styles of content once you get down to a certain point with that. So what we do is we use media queries inside of styles and, or inside our CSS pages. So what we're going to do is type up our first line here. It's going to be at media screen. And then we have parentheses and then our little curly braces. So what's going to happen inside of these parentheses, we're going to say max width. And then we're going to define a pixel width for the screen resolution. So what this is going to say is once we get down to a certain resolution, we want these styles that are going to be defined within these braces here, these brackets, we want these styles to replace the styles that they are. So at, such as if we define a right column style inside of these brackets, then it will replace these right column styles. So we'll say once we get down to 590 pixels, and I choose that because we're using a 600 pixel wide container, it is not a specific screen resolution, of course, if you're doing this for a website, you'd want to target uh, resolutions that are used on phones and, th and things like that, tablets. But in this case, I'm just going to go with an example, so we're going to use that. The first thing we're going to do is define a style for the container. So we're going to say, okay, now we have the margin right and the margin left set to auto. But once we get down to this point, we don't really need those anymore. It's going to be within the center of the browser, no matter what, since we come in here and we say 100%. Now what that means is that once it gets down to a specific point, in our case 590 pixels, we will want the container to be as large as it can possibly be within the browser. And then we're what we're going to do is we're going to define styles for our, our columns here. So we're going to say, uh, let's see, the width of the left column is going to be 70% because it's going to be the large column. It's going to be the one on the left. So it's going to be 70% of the container. With that being 100%, it will come down to being 70% of the browser size. And we're going to leave these styles because we want it to, we want it to still float to the left and we want it to have a background so we can see what's going on. We're then going to take our right column, copy, and we're going to paste it down here, and we're going to say, okay, we want this to be the leftover from that left column. So we're going to say 70, or sorry, 30%, and then we're going to make that float to the right still and leave a background color. So if we control S, we come to the browser, and we refresh here. Notice when I have our resize the browser right there, when it gets to right there, the columns start to shrink with the browser. And that's a good thing. But you'll see the image stays the full size because the image has defined height and width within its properties. So what we have to do is we have to say it can only be as large as the container it is within. So the way to achieve that is saying image. Let me get that down off the next line there. Image. What was a width? 
100%. It will be as large as it can possibly be. In this case, the container is its container. It is its restrictor. Control S, browser, make this large again, F5 to refresh. And when we resize right there, you can see that the image is getting smaller with the browser. That's pretty cool, right? But once you get down to a certain point, you don't want these columns to be so small they just have like one word per line. So what we can do is we can make it into a single column page once you get down to that point. So how we do that is we use a media query twice. And we'll say, okay, so that's going to happen when you get to that. But once you get down to 350 pixels, I'm going to replace those styles with something. So we're going to remove the floats from this because we want it to stack on top of each other. And we're going to make it 100% so it's the full size of the container. Remove the float and 100%. We can get rid of these because they're already defined up there. We're not changing those any. Control S. Oh, I forgot I didn't have a close to that media screen. Oh, that made it queer. Browser. F5 to refresh. Nothing's changed through here, but once you get to right there, the floats disappear, and they start stacking on top of each other, the way we want them to. And they become 100% of the container. That's awesome. It works just like we want it to. And you can just think of the possibilities for this. So we can apply this to navigation bars, so it's in a horizontal display until you get to a certain point where it's not going to fit. And then you can collapse them into a vertical display. It's pretty awesome. One more thing, uh, whenever you are visiting a website that has a responsive setup, it will, uh, right off the bat, determine the screen resolution they have to work with. The browser's uh, screen size, the browser's size, pretty much. And on an iOS phone, on, a, on an iPhone, I've noticed this is the problem there. Whenever you are working with an iPhone, say you have your media query set at 480 pixels. So it, it will resize to fit content within a 480 pixel screen. The phone doesn't know that right off the bat. So it's, it's going to think it's still the full size screen. It's going to think it's still the full size website. So what you have to do is tell it, hey, no, 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 you have to fit my content now. I fit my content to your screen but you have it always zoomed out because you think it's a full-size website. So now you have to fit your screen to my content. And the way we can do that is with a meta tag that I have over here. So it's a meta tag that is targeting the viewport. It's a name viewport. We're controlling the viewport here. And we're going to say, okay, the content's width equals the device's width. And the scale to start off with, the initial scale, is 1.0, so it is full size. And that's it. Now that will work inside of an iPhone. Maybe Android devices do it now too. I don't really know. But that's how to combat that. That is pretty much it for this tutorial. I plan on doing more responsive website tutorials in the future. So if you want to see those, subscribe. If you do not want to see those, do not subscribe. Because I will be doing those and you will be bored. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Don't forget about awfulmedia.com. It's my website. I just released uh, my very first WordPress theme. You can download it for free. It incorporates the Respond template I released a while back. This is the updated version, and then here's the WordPress version of it. It uses HTML5, CSS3, and Bootstrap. So make sure you check that out. Download it if you like what you see, and if you don't, let me know what you don't like about it. And I'll consider updating it and making some changes to it. So be sure to check that out. I'm also going to do a rework of the whole website. That's coming up. The website needs it. It's going to happen. And I'm going to be posting uh, some updates on this page about what, how, you know, how things are going, what I'm up to at that time. So be sure to check that out.